Hello everyone, my name is Brody, and today's episode of Brody's Learning Adventure will be learning about Native American reservations, land conflict. Again, now the U.S. government was allowing American settlers onto land that was previously set aside for Native Americans. As miners and ranchers traveled west, they competed with the Native Americans for resources along the way. The U.S. built forts on Sioux land to protect the travelers. Sioux is pronounced Sioux. Like, say with me, Sioux. That's how you pronounce it. More reservations. And no, they're not making reservations for a show. In 1866, Sioux warriors led by Red Cloud began a series of attacks against those forts. In one attack, Sioux military leader Crazy Horse and his men ambushed American soldiers. And no, Crazy Horse was not actually a horse. The U.S. government agreed to abandon its fort and create a reservation for the Sioux, overseen by the Bureau of Indian Affairs. The previous year, the Treaty of Medicine Lodge had created reservations for the Colmank, Apache, Cheyenne, and several other peoples. Most of the Plains Indians didn't like the idea of living on a reservation, which would destroy their culture of nomadic hunting. However, they had little choice but to accept the terms of the treaties and move because the U.S. government wanted to use their land. Conflict between the U.S. government and Native Americans continued throughout the 1860s and 1863. The U.S. 1860s. In 1863, the U.S. government burned the Navajo villages to force the people to make the long walk, a painful 300-mile trek to their appointed reservation in New Mexico, which killed many Navajos on the way. It's sort of like how Spongebob and Patrick were walking so many miles ever since they lost their patty mobile to that burglar. In the first movie, that is. In 1864, the Colorado militia opened fire on a Cheyenne camp in the Sand Creek Massacre. Although the Cheyenne, led by Chief Black Kettle, retaliated, they eventually agreed to stop fighting. Custer's Last Stand I bet all of you heard of this from title parodies, and lots of parodies too. In 1874, soldiers led by Lieutenant General George Armstrong Custer found gold on the Sioux Reservation in the Dakotas, tempting the U.S. to abandon the terms of the Second Treaty of Fort Laramie and purchase the land. However, Sioux Chief Sitting Bull refused to sell. Instead, he and Chief Crazy Horse encouraged their people to fight, beginning the most famous Native American act of resistance of the time. On June, 20, on June 25th, 1874, 1876, Custer and a few hundred of his men faced thousands of Sioux and Cheyenne in the Battle of the Little Bighorn near the Little Bighorn River in Montana. The battle is also known as Custer's Last Stand because Custer's entire unit was killed, including Custer. Although Little Bighorn was a major Sioux victory, it was also their last. The U.S. government stepped up its military action, and the following year, in 1877, Crazy Horse surrendered. Although Sitting Bull initially fled to Canada, he surrendered in 1881 and was sent to a reservation, where he was later killed by reservation authorities. Still, many Native American groups continued resistance movements. In 1877, Chief Joseph attempted to lead the Nez Perce from present-day Oregon to Canada, rather than rather than to their appointed reservation in Idaho, though he gave in after the U.S. Army threatened to attack. Geronimo led the Apache resistance from the 1870s until his surrender in 1886. The buffalo were virtually hunted into extinction between 1850 and 1880. This hurt the Native American people by eliminating the most essential animal in their hunting culture. Buffalo were hunted for meat and hides as well as hunted for sports sport or tr from trains. The railroads wanted fewer buffalo because large herds caused delays in schedules. The Dawes Act 
to make Native Americans assimilate into American culture instead of maintaining their own, Congress passed the Dawes General Allotment Act in 1887, splitting Native American lands into allotments. An allotment is a portion or share as of land. Allotments, private plots of land that were to be used as farmers, Used as farmers destroy farmers destroyed the Native American culture of communal property. The government reclaimed leftover land and sold it to the American settlers. The government also took many Native American children away from their families, sending them to schools like the Carseal School. Olympian Jim Thorpe graduated from that school in Pennsylvania to make them more American, changing their names and restricting how they wore their hair and what language they could speak. Wounded Knee Many Native Americans longed for the old way of life. They wanted to be nomadic hunters again, but the food demands of the American settlers and railroad crews that decimated the bison population. Many turned to a religious movement led by a prophet called Wavaka, who spoke of a future time when the buffalo would return. Parts of Wavaka's teachings included a ceremony called the Ghost Dance, a peaceful religious gathering that the U.S. government interpreted as a threat and tried to suppress. On December 29, 1890, American troops attacked and killed hundreds of Sioux who were gathered for a ghost dance in the Wounded Knee Massacre. This became the last major class of its time between the U.S. government and the Native Americans. Here's a quiz to see if you've been paying attention. Why were Indian reservations created? Why did Native Americans sign treaties forcing them onto reservations? How did reservation life change Native American cultures? What was the long walk? Who won at the Battle of the Little Bighorn? How did the U.S. government make money from the Dawes Act? Why were Native American children taken away from their families? And what were ghost dance ceremonies? Pause the video now to think of the answers for yourself. Here are the answers. 1. The U.S. government wanted to use Indian land. 2. They had no choice. 3. They could no longer follow buffalo herds or hunt freely, which destroyed their traditional nomadic way of life. And allotments also, dis also destroyed their culture of communal property. 4. It was the journey of the Navajo from their homeland to their reservation. 5. Crazy Horse and Sitting Bull led the Sioux and Cheyenne to a victory. 6. Land on the reservations that was not used for allotments was sold. 7. They were sent to school to be Americanized. And 8. Religious gatherings of Native Americans who hoped for a future in which the buffalo would return. Be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and hit the notification bell so that way you won't miss any of my new episodes. This is Brody signing out.